This video is going to briefly cover Character Creator and ZBrush installation, the flexible CC topology where we can create anything from a hyper real to a super stylized character, and everything in between for a wide array of interesting use cases. We then hop right into creating a neutral base body and discuss using Character Creator's morph system to dial in roughly what you want your character to be while always being animatable and evaluatable. This introductory video is just the first fun step into making your own fully customized character. So where do we get started? Go ahead and go and download the Reillusion Hub. This is the launcher that Reillusion has for all of its products. And you're gonna see we have iClone and Character Creator Cartoon Animator. This series is gonna be using Character Creator. And if you click on that, actually click on any of these, you're gonna see the add-on options change. For Character Creator, we'll be talking about Headshot and ZBrush Face Tools in future videos. But for now, just hit this refresh button up in the upper right hand corner, make sure you have the latest version installed and then you can even hit open in here and it'll go ahead and launch Character Creator for us. Uh, the other application we're gonna need is ZBrush. So you can do the exact same thing. You can load up the Maxon app and then just install and launch ZBrush from that. So here we are in Character Creator. If your interface doesn't look like mine, uh, you can just go in here to Window, we'll just start fresh. Window, Workspace, uh, Reset Layout, Here's all the defaults. And right here, we're in the content tab. If you want to, there's projects in here. You can double click and load them up and see how they work. You also have underneath actor, uh, character. There's a bunch of different characters you can bring in and start with. We're gonna start with just a default neutral base. And you're gonna find that over here in the modify panel. So with nothing loaded, all we have available to us over here is the modify tab and load neutral base. Go ahead and click that button. And that went ahead and loaded up a character. And now that we have a character loaded, you're gonna see not only do we have the modified tab, we also have motion and morphs, and we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, but over here, back on the content side, you'll see underneath the scene tab, we now have a character group node. And under here, we have a CC3 base plus group node. And under here, we have all the body parts that make up our character. Now, the character by default is kind of in a relaxed standing pose. Let's go down here to the animation player and choose the motion button. Go up here to pose and choose a pose. This will put it in a nice relaxed a pose. Now we're going to be creating a character from CC3 base topology. If you want to see that topology, you can go over here to you select the CC base body right here. There's a shading mode. Well, first there's, there's eyeball. So if you want to turn off the base body, you can just turn it off with the eyeball. Uh, right next to that is our uh, shading mode. So we're on normal by default. You can switch down here to wireframe. And here is the wireframe that makes up this base body. Now don't think for a second that, okay, great. I have to stick with this body topology and we'll go ahead and switch this back to normal smoothing mode. So that means I can just make a basic character. Absolutely not. There's a ton of flexibility that comes with this base body. And if you've been following along on my YouTube channel, we've been making everything from like hyper real vampire creatures all the way down to super hyper stylized Super Mario characters with big exaggerated cartoon features and everything in between. So while it is humanoid, there's a ton of range and ability in there. Again, even on the stylized side to do super chiseled features with very stylized wrinkles and ink lines. Again, all the way to hyper real, you know, creature work. So we'll get to all of that. But how we're gonna do that is we're gonna start with this base body. And what that allows us to do is inherit all the cool low hanging fruit functionality, lowering the barrier to entry. So it's already a weighted character. It's a rigged character. We can change the character in any way that we'd like and it'll even have facial animation built in. So we get a lot of stuff for free by sticking with this topology. Now, that doesn't mean you have to. So uh, again, on my YouTube channel here under playlist, there is a Real Illusion Character and Creator and ZBrush playlist in here. I might rename that. But this is a way to take just an arbitrary, say you're already using ZBrush and you're new to Character Creator, and you just wanna pose out one of your characters from your ZBrush files, you can absolutely do that. Go check out this playlist and that'll walk you through that process. Now, setting up facial animation will be a little bit different. This is where the power of the character creator topology comes into play. But again, for just posing out or animating your ZBrush creations, go look at that playlist. Now, while I'm going over here and choosing different options, you're gonna see uh, this menu over here is context sensitive. So when I'm on the base body, I have certain objects or certain options, and then the eye, I have certain options. Go up here and choose that base CC3 base plus top node. 
this is your character group basically and uh, you're probably going to spend most of your time in here so that top node selected let's go ahead and choose the material tab i'm going to choose these first group of materials here from tongue down to i guess nails and then if i scroll down you're going to see base color is selected and since these are all materials on this object with the base color selected, I can continue scrolling down and change that strength down to zero. I'm temporarily removing the base color and it's a little bit of a bright white. So I'm gonna keep scrolling down until I get the diffuse color, click on that, and then just set this to like a mid gray. Now we can just focus in on the volumes of our character. We can always bring the, the color back, uh, not a big deal. But let's talk about how to create this cool character we wanna make. Now, again, there's a lot of flexibility in Character Creator. If we click back on the attributes tab, you're gonna see we can go right in here to edit mesh and we can edit the geometry and by selecting and doing soft selections. Not how we're gonna update our character though. Uh, that's not exactly fun in here. So I'm gonna go over here and there's a motion option where we can go in here and edit our pose, import animations, edit our facial animation. There's a lot of really cool stuff we'll get into. The next one is what I'm really interested in. So underneath the modify panel, here's our morphs tab. And in here is a ton of morphs available to us to morph this character around. And while we're morphing the character around, the bones underneath the body will follow along with it. So we never break our ability to animate or do facial animation while we're pulling around these morphs. So that's super powerful. In fact, if you wanna see those, you can go up here to window, bone manager, or hit F3 on your keyboard, and under here under viewport bone display you can turn those on so for example while we're you know like the first one on here is scale head if we just scale that head up you're going to see the bones follow along with it if we go down here to body and we change it to a different body you're going to see again those bones follow along so no matter what's happening with our character the bones are following along as long as we're using these morphs i'm going to go ahead and turn those bone visibility off and let's talk about this morph section. So back in here, when we were under the actor tab, uh, again, we, we were playing around with the head scale. If you double click any of these morphs, the title here, you can double click those. It'll switch from zeroed out to 100% to the lowest value. So basically highest value, lowest value, uh, zeroed out value. So that's just some functionality you'll find in here. I can't quite see all of this. So I'm gonna pull this window over a little bit and then pull this over a little, there we go. So now in here, you're gonna see, we also have the ability to kind of just go number by number, or you can type in say 50 and hit enter. You can lock this value if you don't want anybody or yourself messing with it. And you can also hit this little heart icon and that'll shoot it over here to your favorites. So to make pretty big changes, we'll start with the body. Again, you can scroll down here. There's a ton of options for the whole body. Luckily, just like everything else in Character Creator, it's super nicely organized, well-named, makes a lot of sense. So if you wanna make changes to the arm, you can just go down here to the arm. Here's all your arm options. Now, instead of going through here and you know just pulling out, you know, okay, yeah, let me make my arm a little longer, then let me go down here to my leg and make my legs a little bit longer. Instead of doing that, I can go up here and turn on this morph button in my uh, menu bar. Your, yours might be in a different position, but look for this morph button here. When you turn that on and then hover over your character, you'll see you have a, a little yellow indicator over the body parts. So now instead of going and choosing head, like so for example, head down here and then trying to look for scale, which you can, if you wanna look for head scale, just start typing in scale up here under your search term and that'll narrow down everything to head scale. So here we have head scale. We can go through here and pull the slider around or with our morph button turned on, we can just go grab the top of the head and we can scale the head up or down. We can scale the neck up or down. We can go through here and we can make the arms longer. We can make the hands uh, bigger or smaller. We can make the legs shorter here. And as we're clicking through here, you're seeing it's actually updating what part of the body we have selected. So if we go down here to feet, for example, and uh, so when I click on the top of the foot, we're in the foot options and I can go through here and I can try to scale up the foot. But in this case, you know, grabbing the top of the foot doesn't allow me to do that. Luckily, I'm already in the foot section. I've already started typing in scale. So foot scale is right here. I can just go ahead and quickly grab that foot scale. Of course, you can click this little X to get rid of the scale modifier. And lucky for us, foot scale is right there at the top. Back here under actor body, full body, you're gonna see there's uh, some options in here. So if you wanna go, you know, change it to a base uh, female or scroll down, here's, here's Kevin's body type. 
it's not affecting the head, but these are just the morphs to turn it into these particular characters. If I keep scrolling down, you're gonna see I have some body thin options, so I can make the body a little thinner. I can keep scrolling down. I can make the body a little older. I can keep scrolling down and there's a body tone in here. And at home, you might be looking at these going, hey, I, I don't have some of these. Uh, if we go back over here to the content browser, there's a custom area where we'll put our own custom stuff later. And over here by default, you'll have template. You have items in here and packs in here. Some of these will come with CC for free. Some of these you can go to their website and you can download asset packs. Uh, for example, Ultimate Morphs, they've got full body, head, morph, 457 morph sliders, etc. So if there's anything in here you see that I'm using and you don't have available to you, then you can either go get the morph pack or we're going to be talking about how to fine tune your body in ZBrush. So don't feel like, for example, uh, in the ears, I can click the ears and I can kind of move them out like Alfred E. Newman and then scale them up or scale them down a little bit here. And just to kind of reemphasize this, if I pr pull up and down, that'll do like the neck length. And then if I pull side to side, that'll do the neck width. Uh, kind of same thing for the ears. If I turn the ears left and right and then up and down, we'll do the scale. Incidentally, if you want to make the ears huge, you can go up here and you can say, okay, give me my 100% ear scale, but I can't go past that. You can type in 200 if you want, and that'll keep going. And you can also go down here at any point, you can hit this bake button. That will reset everything to zero, and then you can continue scaling past. So whatever makes the most sense to you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and double click this and we'll set that uh, back to 100. But at the bottom of my ear section, you'll see I have ear elf. Well, let's say you don't have the ear elf slider. It's super easy to go in a ZBrush and just pull those points up. Not a huge deal. So the morphs really are just kind of a quick way to go through and fine tune and modify what you're working on, set the proportions and the scale. And while you're doing that, remember those bones are following right along. So while we're going through here, we'll pull those cheekbones out a little bit. We'll uh, make the mouth a little bit bigger. I can go again back into my full head here. I can choose face thin. And again, if you don't have the face thin slider, no big deal. You can manually go through here and just do this. The real power of the morphs also comes into play, not only just for kind of setting up your base character to go and modify, but once you have your final character done, let's say you're making, we're making a goblin today. So we'll have one base goblin, but let's say you want to just do slight modifications to your goblin to create a family of goblins, mom goblin, dad goblin, children goblins. This is a really easy way to do that. As opposed to having to hand go and make every single one of those, you can use these morph sliders to create multiple characters uh, very easily because it's really just moving around the uh, low res geometry. And again, because the bones are moving around, I can go in here to motion and we can always at any point go through here and say, okay, great. What would it look like walking around? Go in here to motion, male, walk, and here we go. Here's our character walking around, moving around. There's other options in here. If you wanna go into soft physics, dance turn, you can see your character moving. So again, at any point, you can evaluate not only the body movement, but also the facial animation. There's facial animation along with that CC3 plus topology. So we'll go ahead and go back here to motion, pose, a pose continue kind of pushing and pulling and uh, creating the character that you want to create. Now we've made a bunch of changes. If you want to see what you've changed, go up here to these currently used option. These are all the options you've currently used. And like I said, you'll see here's all the things that we've changed so far. Uh, keep in mind though, like for leg length here, if we double click leg length and set it back to zero and then go to any other option and then go back to currently used, leg length will disappear because it was zeroed out, which technically means we weren't using it, so it'll remove it from the currently used. Of course, you can go back in here and you know, continue doing this, and as you're making changes, all of those morphs will end up over here in the currently used options. The next video will cover how to go from character creator to ZBrush, where well, we'll continue to refine our creation, then going from ZBrush back to character creator, and back again to ZBrush as many times as you need while you hone and test your character.